Well, we are at that stage now where I have aligned that by eye basically. Uh, I've got marks on here which you can't really see because it's causing the cutter itself is causing a shadow on there. Um, it's all tightened up. Oh, I suppose the next thing to do is to attempt the cut. I've adjusted the travel of the cutting head, um, the slotting head, sorry, so that it's basically not much more than uh, the height of this uh, part. Um, yeah, so the cutter, the bottom of that cutting uh, edge will actually go slightly beyond the depth of the vise uh, to make sure it goes all the way through. And there is a gap, uh, that, you know, in between the two sides, unlike my other vise, um, which is flat bottomed. So this will allow uh, a certain amount of clearance for things like drills and of course this time a slotting head. So this is the first time I've tried this one. Um, I've obviously, uh, I'll probably end up with a lot more pieces of metal like this around the garage in the years to come. When I end up aligning the cutter um, to make sure it's, it starts straight. Because uh, the last thing I want is um, the cutter to be rotated around and start cutting on one edge because the keel will not really fit in very well and it would be pointless as well because it would never fit in the motor shaft um, the, never, the two would never meet up so it's probably as well that I get a few pieces of metal like this so I can test the uh, cuts are straight before I actually start and I'm pretty happy with the way it's set up at the moment so I suppose we'd better get on with it uh, Hmm, slight trepidation as you might expect. Let's better find my specs. Good. Right. Okie dokie. started to cut on the right hand side first, as long as the other one starts quite soon. You alright? Yeah, there it comes. So within 10 thousandths it's started on both sides. It's like we're cutting my first key. The other bit of steel was uh, from a bit of towing bar or some kind of camping equipment and I think the steel is now going to be a bit tougher so this might cut a bit more easily I'll have to really be checking that it's actually going the full depth I'm sure it is all the same I think I'll, I won't mind checking stop that Now then, I do have a torch somewhere. I have been slightly pedantic and I've very likely set this up to be just about perfect, if not going all the way through. There's no harm in checking, there we are, find my torch. So, is it going all the way through? It certainly is. Alright, let's get started up again then.
tiny thing which you think will take a long time to do, but it doesn't really. Not compared with taking the diameter down from the, uh, the outside that you can see to the, you know, from this diameter to that diameter, that took a long time. doing this by feel, I don't feed it anymore, I don't particularly relish those thumps that I get, but each time I get one of those thumps, a very nice looking peel of metal comes off the bottom, that'll be all that bad. easier than doing it on the lathe, I can tell you that for sure. I know, but needs must. Some of those stumps make a few cylindrical tools on my milling table roll a bit. I'm really keen on them. Now, short of time it takes to do it. There is a line at which I have to stop. Um, and then I'll check the depth from uh, here, this edge, to the other far end of the key slot. Make sure it's. Uh, Close to what I want it to be without moving the tool or the workpiece. Basically, there really. A few more cuts.
do now is try and stop that so that the uh, it's out of the way. I'm not sure we're going to get anything to measure in there. We'll have a look. Oh, right, I'll just take a measurement for that and we'll get back to it. Well, it's pretty much bang on. Um, when you put the key inside the motor shaft, uh, it measures 1.221. One point two two two, uh, which is about just over thirty six mil. Um, I like to work in thousands. Um, so yeah, it's about one point two two mil, and the gap between this edge and here is as near as damn it the same to the nearest thousandth. But I can't help thinking that if I put another couple of thou on that, um, things might be really easier. Things need to have a little bit of play. So, um, I'm only talking maybe two or three now, but it's just to keep my peace of mind. So, we'll set the cutter off again. I think we should be okay to go. I may have just touched it really rather than doing any more cutting but... Huh, well, didn't time that very well, did I? I'm supposed to time it so it's clear. That theoretically marks the end of making the coupler because that was the only thing that needed to be done and I suppose it's quite a milestone to be honest because I really um, need to make this rather than keep the old one so right it's done I'll have to move this out of the way and I think it's a bit cumbersome not the best hit in the cutter but there you go uh, this is going to need a press fit on the motor and I shall have to decide the best way of doing that but it looks like it's made quite a clean cut difficult to see without the light shining off everywhere else I think that's pretty accurate so these attachments can do their job 
it would seem. Uh -huh. Well, the next thing is to give it a test. Try and get it on the motor shaft. Oh well, done. Well, there it is, all back together again. Uh, I might end up having to turn this down a little bit. I think I'm sure I wanted to take about a quarter of an inch off there to create a relief between the motor plate that's actually on the motor, the flange, and uh, the back of this. So I might take that down about a quarter of an inch. It should be a fairly quick job tomorrow. But that, to all intents and purposes, is a finished product. And the key fits in quite nicely. Very nicely, actually. Doesn't fall out, or hopefully it won't. So it's quite a nice snug fit. Uh, it's actually, that's flush there, but it's longer. This is longer than the key itself, so there's obviously a bit of a gap at the back. Uh, but what will hold it in position is the fact that the motor shaft has the slot cut in. And it's obviously been done by a vertical mill uh, because it's encased. Once this key is in the motor shaft, it can't move left or right. So that'll hold it in position from wherever it needs to be. And hopefully, all my calculations for how big this thing has to be uh, will turn out just right. So, really, now because the mechanical side of it is more or less finished. It'll be soon time to think about the electrics and rigging up a decent 45 amp supply for the converter that I bought for it. Um, so I think the only mechanical, thing, mechanical things I have to do now is cut the hole out in the middle of the plate that I made quite a while ago now. Um, and so that the motor coupling can be attached to the motor shaft and uh, get some 14 mil bolts to secure the motor to the plate and then try and fit it to the lathe and then uh, it really will be getting closer to the point where I can use this behemoth of a lathe which sometimes I think is perhaps more trouble than it's worth uh oh, dripping oil, look at that it's been christened right, well that's done might sell the slotting head now. Anybody want a slotting head? <laughs> oh lord, what a palaver. Right.